Women in Leadership brought to you by Heron Code, the management consultancy for what happens next. For more information, you can visit heroncode.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Heron Code Women in Leadership podcast, a podcast which is high up in the air with you, quite literally 30,000 feet up on Emirates Airlines. We are so, so proud of this. Season one is available for you to hear on any flights when you're flying with Emirates. We're we're really proud of ourselves. And because of all the success and because of all your love and support, we are on to season three where it continues in all its glory. I am joined by an incredible woman leader, Lamia Gurdi. She has diverse experience in, in all fields of leadership and is currently the shared services director within the Al Nahdi family office. Lamia. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm fine. I'm doing great. Amazing. It's, it's, it's so great how you came about being on this podcast. You came across one of our episodes and now you're a guest on the episode. And it's such, it's such a pleasure because we have so much to talk about today. Uh, so many of these roles and the, all these hats that you wear, not just professionally, but personally as well. Uh, but one thing I definitely want to do is, is touch on your background and, and where you came from. Born and raised in the kingdom, in Saudi yeah. Arabia. Yeah. Uh, where exactly were you born and raised and how was that time for you? Actually, I born in uh, Jeddah city in mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, but uh, my family, uh, my mother and father side, originally from Medina, okay. uh, which is a very decent city. Everyone even noticed the people by behavior that they are really fr they are from Medina city. Wow. So I'm proud to, to share that as mm. well. Uh, I spend. Uh, I feel like I was a lucky uh, person in this life that I, I was. Uh, I was raised by amazing parents, mm. uh, who really did. The, uh, they really did the, their best, honestly, uh, to to made us the person, uh, yeah. uh, successful person in the life. Mm. Either me or my brother and sister as well. Mm. So um, this is it. Yeah. And yeah. uh, what were you like as a, as a girl? I mean, meeting you now, I've only been sitting with you for five minutes you exude yeah. confidence were you always like this tell me about you as a child yeah actually um they even my parents they they, they used to tell me that uh, i'm a leader by nature even <laughs> in my childhood yeah i like to to uh, support people even if someone's sad to to stand for mm. them uh, even if someone in trouble to try to figure out anything to 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 lift them up and uh, make them to find uh, the right solution for their issue or problem or, or etc. In my personal, even uh, uh, life or even in my um, in uh, during the school or even when I start to work as well. Mm -hmm. So my dad he used to tell me that I'm a leader by nature. Yeah. And were you were you a dreamer? Did you have big dreams of yeah. what you wanted to be and become? Yeah. Actually, I was dreaming to 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 do to to be an um, in a position that I can. Um, help people to to uh, to overcome their challenges, yeah. their um, the uh, to unlock their potentiality, to mm. to discover themselves, so they can uh, perform well. They can even uh, do better in their lives. Mm -hmm. And when I when I talk when I mentioned that, uh, I meant the personal even in, in in the work life as well. Yeah. So um, this is it, and even. Um, I remember that uh, after the graduations, um, I consider myself um, uh, one of the, uh, uh, belong to the kind era. Mm. Uh, there is a, <laughs> there is a, a unique uh, nickname for the people who were born from between 80s and uh, late 90s. Uh -huh. So they are a kind era oh. who uh, were and actually in, um, in uh, between the, the tr they um, actually, uh, we're in the transformation. Mm -hmm. They attend the transformation happening in Saudi Arabia, and also they were actually in the back days of this transfer yeah. transformations. So, uh, based on that, and even I remember be, when I finished my high school and I started to think about the major, uh, I was really into something that um, allowed me and enabled me to to have a diverse uh, opportunity to learn from uh, other culture, other mm. people. And um, there was like a um, uh, lack of, honestly, uh, potential places to work with such uh, mm. Uh, requirement unless you uh, to be in the healthcare or medical uh, right. uh, sector. 
So um, I graduated from the university. I, I picked the, the, the major that helped me to, to work uh, as a health educator. Mm. Uh, and I was uh, one among, like, uh, I remember the first gra graduate from this uh, unique program. That we were like uh, 25 mm -hmm. uh, from one of the very public, uh, well-known uh, medicine school in mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, located in Riyadh. And I started to work as a health educator and I was doing great. Um, in terms of achievement, number of awareness, and even um, in social media, a lot of interviews happen, and a lot of uh, major things has been achieved. Mm -hmm. But I always felt there is something missing. Yeah. I, I always felt like I need to do something more mm. than that. And by coincidence, again, yeah. <laughs> and I always share this thought with my dad. Yani. Yeah. He's a big listener, and he's honestly... Um, my role model, yani I always seek his advice uh, when I face any issue or even I want to take his opinion about anything mm -hmm. that I'm, um, I'm, I'm trying to approach. I told him that I feel there is something missing and I, I felt like I can do something better and I can do something more. And I was telling him, I wish if I can just change the, the work environment to work in different sector. Mm -hmm. And I said, and he would start to convincing me, you already spent, you invest a lot of your time, your effort mm -hmm. uh, at taking the certified training, uh, attending symposiums uh, and etc. And we just shut down the discussion on that. And I remember, I can't actually forget this day. Mm -hmm. I got a call from him, send me your updated resume. And then I, I told him, for what? They were actually announcing about a major or mega project uh, uh, in the kingdom mm -hmm. under the uh, the king of Abdullah, King Abdullah, mm -hmm. the, the king of Saudi Arabia. And I think any Saudi citizen, he was dreaming actually to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to, uh, to have the opportunity to work there. And I went through the everything. I went through the, the interviews and I, I was and actually like... Uh, Concern what will be the title because uh, when they call me, they said they have like a different or variety of opportunity mm -hmm. and they are meeting the people and they will see who will fit there. Yani. Yeah. Still, they don't have like a clarity about that. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't forget the questions from the VP of the divisions. Uh, he said, uh, can you convince me? Uh, what is the common uh, experience that... Uh, based on your previous work and working under the, um, the shared services uh, mm -hmm. division uh, or uh, in the human capital uh, department, I told him it's dealing with people because either if, if it's patient or, or employee, uh, you're dealing with people. So mm -hmm. you need to understand the people and you need to read, uh, use your emotion, intelligence, uh, acumen in terms to, to help people to yeah. unlock uh, their uh, hidden mm -hmm. potential, either competency or behavior, who led them to overcome any challenges that they might, uh, they may face. So, and I got the job. Wow. <laughs> and uh, the things that helped me, honestly, to, to um, and support my decision, honestly, at the same period I received the job offer, I, I got accepted to pursue my higher education in USA. And at the same time, I was having an amazing race in, in the hospital. And I got this tempting offer in this mega project. Wow. <laughs> so it was really hard decision for me to, mm. to, um, to take. Yeah. Uh, and again, I went back to my dad and he gave me just a clear answer. Would you guarantee if you travel that you will be back and you will get the same opportunity that you have? Mm. So based on these questions, yeah. he helped me to to um, to take to challenge myself and take the opportunity to explore the new sector that has been opened uh, for me. And I believe it was the right decision in the right time. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, it takes a lot of uh, you have to be brave to want to change something like yeah. that. You had already invested so much time, so much money, so much of your energy into one particular path. And I'm sure there's so many people listening right now who it can hit you at so many different stages in your life. You could be 60 years old and be in an industry for like 40 years and want to make a change. What do you think it was that pushed you to make that change? And of course, you're brave by nature, but there was also some planning and thought behind going for a new opportunity and a new challenge. 
Yeah, actually, as I told you, I felt there there is something missing, mm. and I felt that uh, all the hard working and investment that has been done and previously, uh, in terms of measuring the impact on other people, wasn't uh, really uh, clear, mm. because at the end you're dealing with patients, uh, and uh, not all of them they were accepting someone mm. to interfere in their life, telling the, telling uh, ordering them to do this and that, or advising them to change their lifestyle mm. in order to adapt with their disease and etc. So this resistance, it, it's it's a kind of make me think that uh, um, let's invest this effort and time in something that I can really sense and measure the impacts. Mm. So um, therefore, I want to explore the corporate life, how it how it uh, it looks like, mm-hmm. because even and because this actually happened in two thousand eight. Okay. So economically, even this year, it wasn't yani, So there was a, yani, a yeah. huge crisis happened mm. <laughs> in 2008. So it was like all the circumstances honestly helped me to, mm. to, to, to take this challenge. Uh, in addition to that, um, the people I met and I see, um, they were really inspiring. They mm. felt, I felt like it's like uh, I will be in the right hand. And if I consider that one of the the, the key things that um, helped me to 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 succeed in my career, um, uh, more than for sure the support from my family or my husband or mm-hmm. etc., is I was actually working in a great companies and I was managed by amazing leaders wow. who really invest their time in terms of coaching or directing or teaching me the, 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 the acumen itself in, in mm. a correct way. And even I remember my colleagues uh, during this time, uh, meanwhile, yani, as we speak now, they are in CHRO level in big G's in, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Wow. So I consider myself, yes, I was really lucky and I, I, I felt like it was the right decision in the right time. Yeah. So um, this, uh, this was actually the main driver for me. Uh, in addition to that, um, usually, um, yani, when you consider a new opportunity, you need to like to do like the equation or mm-hmm. the comparison, if uh, you allow me to say it correctly. So when I did that, uh, I felt like um, it's it's worth to take this uh, uh, challenge and mm. wor- uh, worth it, it to to uh, to pursue this. Um, uh, and uh, continue in this uh, process as well. And at the same time, um, there was like sense, you know, your own sense uh, when you kid, uh, when you feel like um, uh, you're trying to, to think about something, mm. uh, always the, you have the sense inside you that tell you, telling you it, it might be right, it might be wrong. Yeah. But uh, I follow that and, uh, and thanks God. And yeah. here I am. And here you are. <laughs> well, you know, one thing that you touched on is is people. And I think you can naturally be a people's person, but it's also an incredible skill to be able to read people. And that's something that you also spoke about. So I would love for you to share with our listeners how you read people, how you become so personable, how you create a connection and relationship with individuals so they feel seen and heard. Yeah. First of all, you need to admit the, the purpose or, or the, 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 the issue that they are really struggling with. Mm. And you need to confirm that uh, from them exactly and try to, to choose the right time and mm. try at least to uh, remove the stress, the st- stressful part from yeah. that. And based on that, you use the, a lot of techniques in terms of uh, what if situations, how you uh, how I can help you, what if you do that, mm-hmm. if you were in this situations, what you will react, what mm-hmm. you will do. Uh, based on that, all based on the answers, you can take things further with the person in front of you. Mm-hmm. But uh, the first things, the in, in order to, to let the people that... Um, feeling free to do, mm. to be open with you, they need to feel that they are uh, really respectful, the mm-hmm. person in front of them, that they're, they're really good listener. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, and also uh, you give them the full attention. Yeah. And let them uh, share whatever, whatever uh, madness or whatever, mm. maybe sometimes uh, some words, unuseful word that it can be shared. Let them just take, oh, uh, finish all of this, uh, on the spot and start to highlight 
the, the points with them. And based on that, you can really be able to, to support them and uh, help them further. Yeah. Uh, this is actually, this is it. And um, uh, the most important things uh, for any person that if you seek any advice or help, they feel that the the they feel that they benefits out of it. Mm. If you just keep listening mm, and just saying that, without giving them anything, so they will close this, this chapter and they will not come again to you for sure. Yeah. If they don't feel feel that uh, you really uh, an added value to mm. to their concern or their thoughts or their uh, issue or whatever was the, the the matter. Yeah, it's tough as a leader because. What we forget when we have a leader is that leader is a human being as well. Yeah. They they have personal feelings. They have their own journeys. Leaders have their own insecurities. You know, they have their own challenges within the workplace. What is your leadership style? How would you describe it? How do you approach being a leader? Um, I was actually uh, asked this question like two days ago. Mm. So uh, I'm a kind of person who... Uh, a uh, big believer on delegations mm-hmm. believe and I believe uh, uh, I'm a big believer of the teamwork so um, I support the team that I work with and even um, I'm when I do that even in the personal from the personal perspective as well yeah if I'm being asked to do something I will find who can help me in order to achieve whatever I'm being asked mm-hmm. and based on that we'll start the, the full delegations and believe on them and with the follow-up techniques and the meetings and the the rest of the things that you can arrange and even you can overcome uh, any things that uh, can uh, pop up or happen Mm -hmm. uh, until we reach to to the ultimate goal that we we would like to achieve. Mm -hmm. And uh, this remind me with uh, one of my previous leader who mm-hmm. <laughs> who uh, actually he was called um, he, he after I left the company I, I was surprised that uh, uh, he was uh, writing some like uh, reference uh, feedback about yeah. me and he and he, he mentioned that uh, she let me uh, achiever she's the achiever mm. if you want things to be done just give it to Lamia so and this is something I really feel uh, proud yeah that I'm being named with this um, yeah, because, I mean, also with what you do, you need to have targets, right? And, and your approach has has been really interesting in terms of how you work within an organization to establish targets are met. And what is your approach? Is it very much on the macro in terms of the bigger goals? Is it working on the micro, on the smaller goals? How, how do you approach uh, truly transforming an organization? Yeah, for sure, when it comes to the strategic part, uh, you need to uh, be uh, very micro. Mm. Uh, and when it comes to the uh, delegating or start delegating or start to cascade down, actually, yeah. the, these goals, you need to give the freedom to act to the people that under you and avoid being very micromanagement mm. with them. Uh, because at the end, uh, we are, as a leader, our ultimate goal to um, to create another layer of leader or future leader. Yeah. So if we will uh, keep uh, uh, telling them what to do or not to do, we're not a leader anymore. Mm. So, uh, and there is a tweet or a post for me even. I was in a situation I I, I noticed, um, or I was attending um, non-decent discussions uh, with the... Um, some of the people that uh, I used to work with. And I said, if you hire a, a talented people uh, and you don't give them the, the, the basic mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, the basic um, fundamental uh, tools or needs so they can perform, it's like having a chef with the Michelin star, mm-hmm. CVs and background, yeah. an empty room and asking asking uh, uh, to have like a unique uh, menu or unique uh, um, or amazing food to, to yeah. be delivered. So uh, this is it. So uh, big believer in empowering, big mm-hmm. believer uh, believing of um, giving the freedom to act to the people. For sure, um, 
when I said uh, freedom to act for, for sure to certain uh, limit of boundaries and based on the internal policy and procedure mm -hmm. and etc. So um, I believe this is this is the key uh, 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 advice yani, yeah. to, 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 to deal with the people that you used to work with mm -hmm. or the, the, for anyone who will be in a position to manage people. Yeah. Um, believe on them, unlock their, uh, challenge them, unlock their uh, potential uh, hidden uh, capabilities because you can notice that you are, we are spending most of our time in the, in the work mm -hmm. more than the time we spend with our family. Absolutely, yeah. So based on all uh, this, I think you will be able to achieve your ultimate uh, yeah, goal. Absolutely. And, and as a leader yourself, I think it's important for everyone to have mentors or, you know, role models, people that guide them as well, because no matter what position you get to, I think you're always learning, you're always growing. Who is that for you? What, who are your inspirations? Uh, I, I just mentioned my dad. He's yes. always my role model and also my husband, mm -hmm. because uh, my husband and I, we work in the same field. Okay. Uh, but in different company for sure mm -hmm. uh, and he's he, he was one of the um, the team that actually I, I used to work with even uh, uh, when I shift my career okay and we met each other each other there uh -huh. so uh, he was big believer on me and he sensed that um, people acumen that uh, it was uh, it was showing from the the way how I communicate with them the way mm -hmm. how I handle the task uh, uh, has been given to me from my manager or even from the team themselves and he started to support me so mm -hmm. he's a big support he's a big believer in me and he supported me and uh, he is my hidden uh, coach as well oh, I love that <laughs> yeah yeah and, and it's so important to have that system around you isn't yeah. it because like I said earlier as a leader you have you you're dealing with your own anxieties, issues, insecurities, and challenges. What is your outlet? Like, like who is Lamia when she's not working? I wanna know more about what do you do to de-stress? What do you do to relax? Yeah, you can, say, the common actually nickname for even uh, for me within my family that uh, the uh, hap happiness ambassador, mm -hmm. I like to make people happy. I like to chase them even together, uh -huh. especially if there is any occasion or anything. Yeah. Shift to be. Mm -hmm. I'm a very into cooking <laughs> <laughs> and I like to share. I never use uh, any recipe as it is. I like always to add my touches. And this is even my, my unique uh, even uh, work technique. Mm -hmm. I take the instruction, but I, I, I always like to add my own touches on it in terms to um, tailor made this uh, to be delivered by Lamia. Yeah. So uh, I like to enhance my personality, my uh, uh, my own actually uh, touches in terms uh, when I deliver anything. Yeah. So um, I'm so into uh, event management. I like to even uh, my kids' birthdays <laughs> or even birthday for my husband or even my cousins. So I enjoy doing that. I enjoy yeah. seeing people smile. Yeah. I, en I enjoy um, giving this moment to any other person. Mm. Uh, even when we do the, the event and the, and the, um, uh, the employee engagement event, because mm -hmm. we have, uh, I created something, it's called like um, a season of joy, mm -hmm. uh, full year uh, uh, calendar with a lot of activities. Uh, I never f felt like there is a struggle what I'm, I'm going to do next year. Always mm -hmm. the idea it comes directly in my mind because I sense what, what was missing in previously and I try to address it in the upcoming uh, event. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is most of the um, actually the things that I, I, I would like to do. Yeah, because yeah. you wear many hats. You take on many roles, yeah. not only professionally, but personally. We just mentioned as a wife, you're also a mother. That's a handful in itself. People talk about work-life balance all the time. There's certain critics who say there is no such thing as work-life balance. What is, what is your uh, opinion on this and how do you, how do you handle it all? I believe you, you need to be uh, very aware about your time management, mm. uh, really, uh, uh, concept because um, 
and set your priority based on that. And always family comes first. And at the same time, uh, you, you should think about that before do any compromise because um, uh, there is replaceable things and there is unreplaceable replace, mm -hmm. things. So based on that, I set my priority. Uh, as I'm actually managing all the things uh, related to my kids and home, while my husband is working in different city, and we met only uh, in the weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, he know that uh, he left he left all this responsibility in in a safe hand. Yeah. In addition to that, to to my parents as well, and I need to be uh, uh, the expected leader uh, in front of my uh, management and my team as well. Yeah. So I think the best things to 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 uh, to balance all of that by. Uh, and it's set a uh, very uh, cohesive, honestly, yeah. an intensive uh, agenda to give everything the right time and the right focus. And uh, you, you should be committed mm. and compliance with all of that because yeah. uh, we always keep saying and giving advices, but at the end, if they don't see it, we will ending up by not acting to or not applying what we preach. Of course. So based of all of that and even... Sometimes I, uh, when my uh, I hear the word, I can't do that, even mm -hmm. from my kids or from my team member. I tell them, let's come and sit down and let's discuss the word of I can't. How, why you can't? Mm -hmm. And I'm not a believer of the word of I can't. It's yeah. not even in my dictionary. There is, I don't want, not mm -hmm. I can't. Mm -hmm. If the person is mentally and physically can perform and can serve, I don't feel that the word of I can't, that should be exist, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you can figure several ways uh, in, in, to overcome any challenges or any things that you're being asked and you feel like you you have no clue about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and But I, I'm not a believer of the word of I can't, yeah. honestly. I love that. I love yeah. that. And then in terms of, I mean, everything that you've achieved, we can put it down to coincidence, we can put it down to good luck, but I think it's just hard work and determination. And so yeah. now we look forward, where do you hope to be? What, what is your, do you have a plan or are you kind of going with the flow at the moment and enjoying where you're at in the present? No, actually I have a plan. Uh, and even this was discussed uh, with my husband because mm -hmm. we are coming from the same field. Yeah. Uh, we need to reach to, to, um, to a limit that we can be um, uh, fully uh, dependent when it comes uh, from uh, from the financial aspect and even from the the personal life perspective and then w we need to create our own actually uh, um, uh, consultancy or office mm -hmm. in order to to start helping other or uh, support other organization that they, they need um, uh, s support or any services related in uh, human capital. Mm, wow. When do you think you'll you'll venture into the to the consultancy? Uh, not so far. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> good to know. It's not so far, yeah. Well, knowing your journey so far, I feel like even if it comes tomorrow, you'll be ready for it, for sure. Um, Lamia, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's been such a pleasure to get to know your story and your journey. And it's, uh, it's amazing how you handle so many things at the same time. I'm sure our listeners have learned so much from you today. So I want to thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you so much, dear. And uh, if you allow me to end this, just yeah, I need the final advice. Yeah. Be yourself, mm -hmm. follow your passion, uh, try to overcome any challenges by asking yourself why. Yeah. Think about the concept why I can't mm -hmm. and uh, let's uh, cross the eye and keep it can't <laughs> yeah. and you will overcome and you will achieve your dream. Amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Women in Leadership brought to you by Heron Code the management consultancy for what happens next. For more information, you can visit herringcode.com.